You're listening to Bizarre Buffet, a podcast of all-you-can-eat weird. I'm your host, Mark Toriello. I'm Jen Wilson. And I'm Mark Bluestein. There'll be food and drink and ghosts. And perhaps even a few murders. You're all in private. When we first went in, one of the people said, Who are you? And Tex said, I'm the devil, and I'm here to do the devil's business. Hello, everyone. Hi. Yes. Hello, I everybody. really wish we could just recreate what we just did before this. Oh my god, it was so hot. We did a <laughs> we did a vocal warm. I don't we even did. know. We were just doing mic checks. It was something similar. I don't know. If and Mark we just can do his all part, start. But. All right, ready? Amen. Um, <laughs> I don't know. It sounded really good. It did. It was better in the moment. I feel like recreated it. You know, yeah. That's fine. But you Mark Toriello to has a there. beautiful mullet that was I done do. by Mark Bluestein. Yes. Yeah. It was done today. For a while, I've been wanting one. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we just decided to pull the trigger today because why not? Yeah. Why not? Exactly. It's never too late to do a mullet. It's never. never too late. I Live see. life crazily. Get a mullet. Live, laugh, mullet. Live, laugh, mullet. I said to Mark, I want a mullet, damn it. I want a mullet, damn it. (laughs) There ain't no meat on it. I know. I know. And I also loved what you posted today on Instagram. What did I post? The question about which one of us from the Bizarre Buffet. That was actually me. (laughs) Oh, it was you, Mark? Yeah. Which which member of Bizarre Buffet has never had an ankle injury? Yeah, and... I mean, is there a drum roll button? It would be Close me. enough. I didn't have an ankle injury. So, no. speaking yeah. of ankles, oh, my uh, question for you tonight. Oh my god! Is what are your thoughts on feet? On other people's feet? Feet in general? Because I know some people are really grossed out by like having people's feet like in their proximity or people Mm. touching their feet. So I was just curious, what's your thoughts on feet? Well, go to Patreon and find out. I'm just kidding. Um, So like, do you, are you grossed out by it? Not at all. I don't have an issue with feet. I really don't. I mean, I don't want them to look like goblin hooves, uh, Mm -mm. preferably, (laughs) but you know, if that's your thing, Hey, no kink shaming. All right. Not here, but you know, um, I don't have a problem with feet. Not at all. Goblin feet matter. Goblin (laughs) feet matter. I don't have much of a problem with feet. So, like, if Mark <laughs> asked you for a foot rub, you would do it? Yeah, I would. I would. Reluctantly. Like, but not because they're feet, hand. just because he's like, mm. okay. I'm lazy. But I'm always <laughs> asking Mark for a foot rub because my jacked up ankle foot situation. And you're okay with giving a foot massage? I mean, in theory, I'm okay with giving a foot massage in, like as a thing. It, it's, it's a tiring process. Well, I know I feel bad. I'd like to introduce you to somebody named Jerry Brudos. Oh, oh my! Wait, I don't know. I don't. Okay, I don't. This no, is, continue. Yeah. Continue. You promise you. Don't I don't know, know what this I'm has like, to do with feet. Not, okay, I know the name, but like continue. Okay. All right. All well, right. I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad. Oh my and god. You, okay. Speaking you really, of feet, let me just show off my sneakers because yeah, your <laughs> sneakers are really cute. They're from the movie Alien. Alien. It's a. Reebok it's limited a re- edition. Yeah, Reebok. Um, sorry, Ridley Scott. So, so help me God. Listen, is I'm this sorry, the guy with the hamsters? No. Okay. Okay. All right, never so mind. Jerry Brudos was born in South Dakota in 1939. Okay. And he was the youngest of two, and he had an older brother, and his mother wanted a girl so bad, and resented the fact that he was a boy. So he was subjected to physical, mental, emotional abuse from his mother because Mm. of it. And at the ripe age of five, he had discovered that he had a shoe fetish. Cute. Five years old. I love that. Like, I mean, sexually. So he found he found a stiletto. (laughs) He found a pair of stiletto heels in a local junkyard. In a junkie. Yeah. An odd place to find high heel <laughs> shoes. Okay. And I mean, it, listen, I'm not lady. arguing. Yeah. But it also was reported that he attempted to steal the shoes of his first grade teacher, Jerry. Jerry, you tried to steal Miss Smith's fucking high heels, you little devil, you. I bet he smelled them, though. 
So he also reportedly had a woman's underwear fetish okay. and reportedly stole underwear from his female neighbors in the neighborhood. Wow. And because of this. I know, wow. I know, Jerry. Come on. Jerry. Get it together. So because of this, he was in and out of psychotherapy and psychiatric hospitals because okay. i mean stealing your neighbor's underwear like is probably not the, the 40s best, yeah. 50s now we're talking yeah really wearing heels Wear, wearing heels and listen mrs gruber next door is tired of her fucking panties going I know, missing i know i know Miss, damn mrs gruber i know fucking mrs gruber Ugh. i wonder so, how he was stealing them i don't know probably that like i don't know line. or like yeah, yeah probably. it could have been the clothesline or like having a play date with like his friends and like went into like mom <sighs> yeah. their mother's you know, dresser drawers yeah. and pulled out some Absolute underwear. Panties. The panty <laughs> drawer. The panty drawer. The panty drawer. So, in his teens, he began to stalk local women and he would knock them unconscious and then flee with their <sighs> shoes. Oh my God. Okay. What? So, again, Jerry. he would stalk the women, he would knock them unconscious and then flee with their <laughs> shoes. I hope she wasn't wearing no Christian Louboutin shoes. I don't know. No. By goodness, how Army Navy store. So then when he became about, he was 17 years old and he abducted and beaten a young woman and threatened to stab her if she didn't adhere to his sexual demands. Mm -hmm. Which was give me your shoes. Yeah. Okay. After he was arrested, he was taken to the Oregon Psychiatric Ward where he was there for nine months. While he was there, it was discovered that these weird sexual fantasies stemmed from the hatred that he had toward his mother. Okay. Mm -hmm. For, you know, the physical, mental, emotional abuse. And he also was diagnosed with schizophrenia. Oh. Okay. America's favorite pastime. So... At 22 years old, he married a 17-year-old girl named Darcy, okay. and he had two children with her. He would ask her to do housework around the house in nothing but high heels Oh God, Mark. while he took <laughs> pictures. Mm. Wow. And at this time, he started <sighs> complaining of migraines, and he would have, like, blackouts, mm -hmm. which essentially consisted of him relieving his symptoms by like going on nighttime raids and stealing <laughs> Panties. shoes oh, mm. and laced undergarments. Oh my god. So he would be like, I got a headache. I gotta go steal some panties. Or like he would just like black out. So he also experienced what they what was reportedly called a transvestite period. Where it can <laughs> It consisted of him having his period. Well, using yeah. like the female persona as a form of an escape mechanism. Okay. He would go into these blackouts, and with this schizophrenia, and multiple personality, he would take on the female persona. Okay. And then that's when things started getting a little crazy. Oh. Cute. I know. High held murder. So. Hi. <laughs> I'm still hoping the two of you have never heard of him, but when I reveal the name that he was given, you might be like, oh, okay. okay. So he was given the name the Shoe Fetish Slayer and the Lust Killer. Never heard of them. Perfect. Yeah. I'm so yeah. excited never that I picked a topic yeah. that you know about. Yeah. <laughs> no, you honestly picked one person where I only know the name Jerry Brudos, but I don't remember anything about mm. him. Okay. So, so this is awesome. Yeah. So he was given the name. And I mean, Mark and I are dealing with our ankle foot problems. So mm. I thought like, why what not? Let's great. talk about feet. It's a, it's a theme. I so, love it. So yes, he was named the shoe fetish slayer. He also was known as the lust killer. He would store the shoes, underwears, and bodies of his victims in his garage. Okay. And you're probably thinking, well, what, what's going on with the wife? Yeah. Well, where is she? she was not allowed to enter the garage unless mm -hmm. she rang the doorbell and there was an intercom that he set up. Oh, an intercom? That he would allow her in. So the garage was off limits. Mm -hmm. Okay. It is known that he has strangled and murdered four women and attempted to abduct two women. Oh. Mm. He would dress up in high heels and masturbate after committing the crime. Mm. 
Uh, charming. Uh, charming. Wow. It's well, terrible. I know. Well, what's the likelihood that his foot would fit? So, <laughs> no, I, all right. He made it. it when... in. He was like, I'll fucking get that foot in there. I don't care. I know. <laughs> fit the fucking fit the shoe in. Good good. A little sprit will get in there. I admire a good Louboutin. This nice stiletto heel from yeah. afar, but like getting me to wear those. I see what people's feet look like from wearing like stiletto heels, and I'm like, no thanks. No, oh, I like my feet too much. Oh my god, I know they turn into like little goblin hooves again. again yeah. Hashtag goblin, goblin hooves matter. Goblin hooves matter. So his first known victim was named Linda Slauson. She was 19 years old. She was an encyclopedia saleswoman who knocked on his door in January of 1968. I hope she had ugly shoes on. So he lured her into the basement, knocked her out with a wood plank, and then strangled her. And then he would dress her in different stolen undergarments, stolen high heels, Right. And then put her in provocative poses. As a corpse? Mm-hmm. Oh. oh no. Ooh. Getting her to move with that so, oh, rigor mortis. Rigor mortis, girl. Like, <laughs> oh, God. So then he sawed off her left foot oh. and put it in the freezer and kept it as a model for his heels. Like, so he would, like, put the foot in the freezer with, like, his stolen heels. <laughs> He's like, I'm not sure if this shoe's going to fit me. Let me try my foot model. If this shoe don't oh. fit, you must look wet. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and then wound up disposing of Linda's body into a river. Oh. Poor Linda. And he kept the shoes, I bet, that motherfucker. So then we move on to Jan Susan Whitney. She was a 23-year-old motorist. Her car broke down on the Oregon Interstate in November 1968. Almost a good year between the first mm -hmm. and the second. Oh, damn. Mm -hmm. Because it was January 1968 with Linda with the cutoff foot. Mm -hmm. Then we moved to Jam, which was November 1968. Wow. So He's Celebrating his anniversaries. So as she's on the Oregon interstate with her car broken down, good old Jerry drives up. Mm. And he offers to give her a ride to his home so she could call a tow truck. Little did she know, while in the car, she would be strangled with a leather strap and raped. Mm. Yeah, Bummer. necrophilia. Oh my God. I know. Ugh. He allegedly had the body hanging from a pulley in his garage for the next few days, Dude. where he like dressed her in different outfits, took pictures of her, and just engaged in some really bizarre activity with oh. the body. Took some pictures. I wonder where those pictures are. Well, we're going to get there. Oh, thank you. Oh, my God. Do we have photos? So, photo time. Then, photo time. But another yeah. thing, Jen, I, maybe you might have this later on. Would Was there anything with smell, with decomposition? Because I feel like it would start to rot. I think. But it would stink. I, stink. Well, that's exactly it. And that's the thing. I don't know. Mm hmm that's okay. We're going to get there. What he wound up doing to Jan was he cut off a breast and made a resin mold, which he <laughs> created a paperweight out of. A paper? Oh what? So he cut a off, he, he hacked one of her breasts off, <laughs> like made a mold out of it, and then he used her like molded breast as a paperweight. Oh, Jerry. That's I know. so weird. That's very specific. It's yeah. very specific. And then he... Can't sell he, that at all. I don't think paperweight yeah. boob. I don't think that. No. I think like it's cup. Very, it's very surrealist. It's, yeah. You think of it like if you're looking like like a, this, like yeah. the, the hacked off part would be the bottom of the weight. And right. then the... Um, I think. I'm assuming. The um, nipple would be up. So... <laughs> yeah. He also threw her into the same river as Linda, mm. along with Linda's hacked left foot. So that left foot was hanging out for <laughs> almost a year in a freezer in, in Jerry's garage. Oh, God. Jerry, you know something? Freezers are for food, unless he was accountable. I know. So then we moved to Karen Sprinker. This was an 18-year-old. She was held at gunpoint in mm. front of a department store in March 1969. 
So we're talking probably like five, six months after this poor Jan. During the attack, Jerry was dressed in women's clothing. Frightening. He made her try on different garments in his basement and then strangled her and pretty much did the same thing that he did with poor Jan. I'm Mm -hmm. not even going to go into the details, but we know. He also made her breasts into a paperweight. Oh my God. What is with the obsession? And disposed into the same river as mm-hmm. Jan and Linda. Let's talk about the paper. How much paper does he freaking have that he yeah, needs like I mean, all two these... booby paperweights? I know. So... Excessive, <laughs> wasteful, green. Then we have our last victim, which is Linda Sally. She was a 22 year old and she was abducted outside of a shopping mall, April, 1969. So a month after poor little Karen. God, he's just getting so greedy. It keeps getting shorter and shorter. He did all of the same things oh that he did to the other women except cut off her breast because they were, in quotations, too pink. Mm. Oh. So he drove an electrical current through her dead body to try and make them jump. No. Wait, the body jump or the... The or nipples. The, oh. oh. Oh like, so he literally did all the same things except hack the breast off. Mm. A weirdo. I know. God, very specific. That's so weird. And then disposed of her body as well into the same river. Oh God. God. So like, you might be asking, how did Jerry get discovered? Yes. Yeah. Right? May of 1969, about a month after his last murder... He was discovered because there was a fisherman out in the river and he found the bodies of Karen and Linda. So Karen was the one that he met in the department store dressed as a woman. He held a gunpoint to her Mm -hmm. and then Linda, the last one. And the police, because there was a local university, went and asked students nearby of any suspicious activities. They were led to Jerry because a female noted that he called her several times to ask for a date. He gave her apparently the wrong address to his house, which led to some suspicious activities. Okay. Eventually, his garage was discovered. The pulley that he hung his victims on were also discovered. Mm. And they found pictures. Oh, boy. So Jerry was arrested. He pled guilty. He was sentenced to life in the Oregon State Penitentiary. Chiari. Mm-hmm. Um, he pled guilty to three first degree murders. He did confess to four, but there wasn't photo evidence for the first victim. It was like, in my defense. Mm-hmm. So he admitted <laughs> to four murders, but because there was no photoed evidence of the first victim, he was only convicted for the three. So uh, that leads me to believe that maybe they thought he was lying or But like... they also found the bodies of the others, but this Linda Slauson, the only thing that was discovered in the river eventually was her foot. Oh, God. Wow. Oh, it was uh, so well preserved for a year yeah, in the freezer. Yeah, exactly, in the freezer as he was trying on all of his new shoes. While he was in prison, he had stacks. I mean, stacks of women's shoe catalogs in his prison <laughs> Stop. cell. Stop. Um, oh, my God. And he wrote to these companies, and he asked them and stated in these letters that it was his substitute for pornography. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. Um, but Jerry, <laughs> Jerry did die in prison in 2006 from liver cancer. Mm-hmm. Good. And in popular culture, you may or may not know this. Well, you obviously don't, but because you don't know about this man, because you were so shocked that I... Yeah. Actually, Ted Levine, who played Buffalo Bill in Silence of the Lambs, based his character off of Jerry Brudos. I oh. could totally see that. Because, right? you know what? I've heard that, like, Ed Gein or something was maybe an influence mm-hmm. for that Buffalo Bill character. But after the story you just told, yeah, it sounds he, like it would be more he, more Jerry. Yeah. Like Jer Jer. He, yeah, so he based the character of Buffalo Bill off of Jerry. Oh, my God. And also, have you ever watched Mindhunter on Netflix? I haven't. I've, I've seen like five minutes of so a episode. So you can actually see Jerry in episode seven and eight. Oh, 
okay. portrayed by Happy Anderson. I have no idea who that is. But no clue either, but that's okay. Essentially what happens in Mindhunter, after Charles Manson and Ted Bundy, there's like a rise of serial killers. This FBI agent and a psychiatrist, they team together and they start going into prison and interviewing serial killers and trying to get into the mind of them about why they kill and why they do what they do. Gotcha. So Jerry was one of like their people. their people. people. Yeah. Wow. You should watch it. It's really fascinating. It sounds really good. I would be interested in yeah. it. Yeah. Charles Manson makes an appearance. Oh, Uncle Charlie. There's a, there's a couple of good yeah, there's a couple of good appearances. But yeah, that was kind of like what they were working on to kind of go into the minds and study the minds of serial killers, why they kill, why they do what they mm -hmm. do. And if I remember correctly, when he when they sat down with Jerry, he was like a normal human being and like just talked to you like he was like a normal person. Yeah, which is just so... And admitted to doing what he did, but yeah. talked about it so casually mm -hmm. and so nonchalantly. Yeah, I, I bet. And that's a true um, sociopath for you, huh? So that's, I uh, like shoes and high shoes, heels. Shoes. The higher the heel, the closer to Jesus. Well, now the next time I hear, if the shoe is on the other foot. <laughs> yeah. If the shoe is on the other foot, be careful. It might be Jerry Brutus and you might end up in a river. Exactly. So. Sorry, and that, my friends, is the story of Jerry Brutus. Wow. I love it. Yeah. I mean, I hate the fact that these poor people had to um, succumb to his shoe fetish. There's nothing wrong with shoe fetishes. Don't kill people for your shoe fetish. Yeah. But kill people for their shoes. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. That's fine. So, I'm sure it's happened at some point kidding. in time. So yes, that's Don't do uh, that. Jerry, the uh, shoe fetish slayer. Wow. Oh. Well, that was a great story. And Jen, I honestly did not know any details I'm about so this. so happy. I only knew the name. I honestly mean that. Good. So I'm fascinated. Nice little hair flip to Oh, me. hair flap. <laughs> I know. Jen was like, listen, if you do fucking know this, so help me God, I am going to break everything everything i was like i get it i'm sorry i was like it's just our minds are always filled with trash so yeah exactly you never know what we're gonna know you never or not, know though. but you get to learn something new you do and, and um, that was kind of in celebration of my ankle making some progress oh yeah. there we from go the, uh, yay ankle yay, from the uh physical therapy yeah yeah so one thing about us is that Two out of three of us have had a fucked up ankle injury, and yeah. that's Jen and myself. Yeah. yeah. If you didn't um, see the survey on Instagram, that's uh, what we were talking about earlier. So. so if you haven't seen it and you're not following us, you should follow us you on Instagram should. at Bizarre Buffet. That is correct. And um, on Facebook.com, it's Bizarre Buffet as well. And on Twitter, it's Bizarre Buffet. And we have a website, BizarreBuffet.com. And what's our Patreon situation like? Our Patreon situation is Patreon.com slash BizarreBuffet. Give us the money. Yeah. yeah. We need yeah. it. Look at us here. We're doing it for you. Yes. You know. We're just peasants. We are. We're but we love to, you all and we yeah, do it do. for you all. We do. So, so um, yeah. You know, until next time, my name is Jerry Brudo's High Heel Collection. And my name is Severed Left Foot. Oh, wow. And I'm the district manager of Payless. Oh, whoa. Ooh. I like that. Oh, my God. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Goodbye. Bye.